Hello, everybody. Welcome to lockdown assembly number five. Um, welcome here to Oak Bank today. I hope everyone's doing really well. Um, now we're in the eighth week of closure, so it's been a, a long time that we've not been in school, and I'm I'm very aware of the challenges that that's bringing to all of us. Now, um, today's assembly. So, what are we going to be talking about today? There's lots of information today. Lots of important announcements that you need to really um, get to grips with. Some of those I've already shared with your parents and there's some other things um, that I, I will announce today as well. Um, and you may well have questions and thoughts about those. If you do, then please get in touch with us and we'll try to make sure that everything is as clear as it possibly can be for you. This, is a, this assembly is an attempt to try and make things really very clear for you. So we're going to be talking about what we expect from you for your work and our raised expectations um, and how important it is that you're continuing to work so well at home. We're going to be talking about what the future is going to bring um, and what we are going to be offering for the rest of the year. Um, we've got some birthdays, um, as we've had before. Uh, we've got information about G GCSE, Pod, Duolingo and Hegarty, how well people are doing there, some great work out there. We've got your shout outs and we've got some artwork as usual. So there's, there's lots to get through. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, but the most important thing is to think about the work that you're doing. Now, as I'm sure you all know, on Sunday night, Boris Johnson sat and gave an announcement to all the country. Um, and in that announcement, he said that primary schools are likely to be coming back um, and going to school from June the 1st, which is after half term. Um, but it's very unlikely that secondary schools, year seven to nine in particular, will be going back. And there might be some um, return for year 10. Now, I'm going to talk a bit about the details of that in a minute. Um, but first, I want to think about what it means to us in terms of our learning, because year seven to nine, and for most of year 10, all the way through until the summer holidays, until September, you are likely to have to keep be continuing with your online learning and your home learning. And we want to make sure that that is as good as it can be for you and that everyone is in a position where they can succeed and where they can achieve and they can go on and you can achieve your ambitions and go to the next steps, whether it's A-level or college or whatever it is that everybody has the schooling and the education that they need, whether or not they're here at Oak Bank or whether you're at home. So we've been working hard to, to get that in place um, and make sure that it works for you with uh, three lessons a day, um, moving learning onto um, Teams, onto Microsoft Teams, which has happened for year 10, is happening for year nine now. And in due course, will happen for years seven and eight as well. Um, and we need to make sure that our expectations of you are as high as they can be. Now, when we started this, when we first had lockdown and, and school closure, it was a big shock to all of us. And it made us all feel anxious and worried and concerned. And those anxieties, those worries haven't gone away. And you would be unusual and a bit strange if you didn't feel anxious, if you didn't find this time difficult. And we expect you to. Um, and as I've said in other, other assemblies, there are things that you can do to, for support, for help. And we'd encourage you to talk to us, um, to listen and to get help wherever you can if you do feel anxious. And because we had those concerns to begin with, we weren't so worried about whether or not you managed to do the work or whether you got it in, we are more worried and continue to be worried about your well-being. However, as this has gone on, as the closure has gone on, your work is becoming more and more important. It's becoming more crucial that you are continuing to progress and you are continuing to have good quality work. And we're starting to see lots of that come through, through from all, all of you, many of you. So, to today, as it stands, since the beginning of closure, we have had 13,000 positive um, points scored because of the work that you're doing and all of the things you're doing. So there's tremendous work that's being done. 
but we need to make sure that it's all being completed and that you're all staying on top of it. So we are going to put in place a system where we can track what work's being done and we can be in contact with you if it's not being done. And if lots of it isn't done, then we'll talk to your parents. So I sent a letter home to your parents yesterday. This is, this is that letter. I'm just going to um, focus on a couple of highlights from that letter that I want to share with you as the students. So the first thing is that as a school, as teachers, we're setting you consistent work. So year seven and eight, you've got three lessons a day. Years nine and 10, you have three or four lessons a day, depending on the day. We're going to give you feedback and support you in that learning. And that once you get onto Teams, that's much easier for us to do, which is why we're moving across to Teams. Um, and we're going to follow up anyone who isn't managing to attempt the work. So this is going to be done on class charts. So the work's going to be set on Teams for years nine and 10, and eventually years seven and eight. But we're going to monitor whether or not it's being done and communicate that with you on class charts. So every time you complete a piece of work, teacher's going to press a button on class charts to show that you've submitted it. So you complete it, you submit it, you give it back to the teacher. And when they press that button, you get a positive point. So you're going to get a positive point for every single piece of work that you attempt. If you um, try the work, but you're not able to complete it and you've got a challenge with it, um, then you um, can let your teacher know and they will be able to support you. And if you can show your teacher that you've tried it and you've given it a good go, then you'll get, you'll get positive points. If you've not really tried and you've only you just submitted it and it's not done and if you've not given it a good effort really, but you've put it in, then you won't get any points, but neither will you get any negatives. If you don't bother at all, then we will just put a not submitted mark on and then you will get a negative point. So if you're trying, if you manage to achieve it, you'll get positive points. If you haven't put much effort in, but it's there, you won't get negatives unless this keeps going on. If you don't bother at all, then you will get negative points. Now, you over a week for years seven and eight, you should have 15 pieces of work to do. Years nine and 10, you should have 17 pieces of work to do. If you fail to try five pieces in a week, then an email will be going home to your parents to tell them that you haven't managed to do those five pieces. And we will then look to see how we can support and how we can help, what the issues are, what's stopping you from achieving that and from getting that, that work done. And there could be all sorts of reasons. If there's a real reason, if you've got a real problem, if you're not well, or if there's a problem at home that means you can't do your work, then we call that extenuating circumstances. And if you have extenuating circumstances, then you won't get negative points either. But you and your parents need to let us know that you have extenuating circumstances, because we're aware for some families, the situations they're in are extremely challenging at the moment and making, making the work much harder. And we want to help and support you when you're in those circumstances. So that's what's going to be happening. Now, this is starting this week. So everything beforehand, before this week, is all in the past, is all history. We're starting it this week, and the first report, the first time that we will be able to see whether or not people have done their five pieces of work will be next Monday. So you might start getting the odd message, the odd negative this week if you don't submit the work and um, you haven't shown that you're trying. So make sure that we're getting all the work done, as nearly everybody is, because we want to maintain really high standards. I want all of you to really, really succeed and be the best you possibly can. Um, and for that, we all need to be working really hard, as most of you are at the moment. And if, at the, we need to track you and support you when you're finding that difficult. So that's the new system. That's what I wanted to share with you. If you've got any questions about that, then you can talk to your heads of year. And I know your heads of year will be sharing their information with you in their podcast and talking to you and letting you know how that's going. But if you've got any concerns, then do talk to them, particularly if you are having a problem completing the work. Let them know. If we know, then we can do something about it to help you. So 
I talked a little bit about the long term. We know that there's very little chance that year seven and eight and nine will be returning this academic year. And that's a very long stretch of time. Um, when we come back in September, we don't know what that world's going to look like. It's going to look, be a very different world. We're not sure what we will be doing then. It's a long way away. Hopefully, we'll all be able to come back and, and be back to normal as, as we would all love, love to be. Let's hope that's the case. Year 10, things are slightly different. So year 10, the government would like year 10 students to have some face-to-face -face time with their teachers. Now, we don't know what that looks like yet, and we're in the middle of planning that, and we're thinking about it, and we will have more information by next week that we can share with you. What I can absolutely say is that it will not be school as usual. So if we think about the students who are the more vulnerable students or students whose parents are key workers who are in school at the moment, they have a very different day to the day that you would normally expect from school. So the most that there is allowed in a classroom is nine students. They are doing the work that's being set for them online, just as you are at home. So they're in a computer room, they're doing the work that's been set for them. They don't have their specialist teachers in here giving them support and help. We've just got two teachers who are looking after them all. And they could be teachers or um, they could be TAs. They don't necessarily have the expertise or the subject knowledge to be able to help every individual. Um, they're having to wash their hands when they come into school. So when they come into school, they wash their hands, they clean their hands, and they have to stay socially separated, socially distanced throughout the whole day. There isn't really the opportunity for, for playtime and, and kind of playing sports out in the backfield as, they, as you would normally expect. They have to stay that two meters separated all the time. And when year 10, if year 10 do come in, it will be much the same. We will have wash stations around the site so that the, you can be washing your hands and keeping yourself safe. We will only be having a small number in each classroom. You won't be moving between classrooms as much as possible. You'll be staying in the same classroom. It may be that the canteen isn't able to open. If it is, when you're queuing up, it'll be like at Tesco's at the moment where you've got to have a, a two-meter two, two meter socially distanced queue. Um, you, it will be a different timetable. It will be with different teachers. It will be a very different experience. So I'm just saying this so that when year 10, when you do come back, you're not expecting it to be what it always was and what you've been used to for, for a long time now. It will be a very different experience. So we will have more information about that next week um, and in the days to come. And as soon as we've got more information, we'll let you know. But at the moment, things keep changing. So I don't want to promise things that we're not able to deliver. And I think the really important thing is, and I've said this to, to staff, and I want to say it to you as students and to the parents who are listening as well, we won't open unless we're absolutely convinced we can do so safely without putting anybody at any risk whatsoever. So there will be deep cleaning. There will be, I say, hand washing facilities. There will be social distancing. We'll make sure it's absolutely safe. So it'll be a very different landscape. But the sooner we get more people in, the better, as far as I'm concerned, as long as we can do it safely, because I want you to be successful. I want you to be learning. I want you to move forward and, and really achieve all your ambitions. Okay, so I know there's loads of information there. Again, any questions, talk to your head of year, ask them questions, ask me questions. We'll do everything we can to make sure that you know exactly where we are and that no one's lacking clarity. Okay, now let's move on to happier stuff. So now, birthdays. Now, I know I've been sharing birthdays. I'm not necessarily all that comfortable about sharing your birthdays. I think there might be some safeguarding issues there. So I'm not going to share student birthdays today. But if you would like me to share your birthday and give you a shout out on your birthday in future weeks, then let me know. And then I'm really happy to do so. So please let me know and I will share share your birthday in future weeks. Now, this week, I am going to share staff birthdays. I think there's no problem with that. 
I'm not going to tell you their year of birth. I think that's high confidential. But I will tell you that there are two birthdays this week. So first of all, it is Mr. Stead's birthday. So happy birthday to Mr. Stead. And I know Mr. Stead is actually here today. He's on his rotor looking after the small group that I've just described. So he is here. So happy birthday, Mr. Stead, for Saturday. So he's got his weekend celebrating his birthday. So that should be good. And then there's a second birthday, which is Miss Edwards. Now, whenever I think of Miss Edwards now, I think of this phone number. So it's her birthday on Sunday. And I know that she would want me to share this with you. We talked about the importance of strong mental health and sharing and talking earlier on. So if you've got any issues, then 07823 you can share those issues um, and we will try to find support and help you as best we possibly can. So, and happy birthday to Miss Edwards for Sunday. Okay, now, I've said how much work is being done. I've said about the 13,000 positives that we've had so far since closure. And obviously, we're going to have thousands more. And there are lots of 500 certificates that went out. And I know more, more are to come. So congratulations to all of you who have done those. Um, we haven't talked about GCSE pod for a couple of weeks. So I would like to um, celebrate um, those people who have been using GCSE pod well. Um, so far, in the first 10 days of May, so this was up to yesterday, we would between us, watched 1,994 GCSE pods. I'm sure that's over 2,000 now. So, interestingly, um, I'm going to go reverse year groups because year 10 have watched 310, mainly in English literature, 175 in English literature, so that's obviously been set. And the top four students for GCSE pod are Ruben, Emily, Liam, and Leon, who've all had over 30 views each. So well done to them. And GCSE pod is proven, if you're a regular GCSE pod watcher, your GCSE grades will be at least a grade higher than people who don't use GCSE pod. So that's a very good tool. So make sure that you are using GCSE pod. So that's year 10. Year nine, 439 pods watched in year nine. Um, and 232 in physics. So five pods on well on waves have been watched by many of you. So I think those those were set by your teachers. So the top four students um, for um, year nine are Ashraf, Alfie, Cameron, and Tia. So well done to you. You've all been using GCSE pod extremely well. Congratulations. And then on to year eight. Year eight, slightly fewer GCSE pods watched than year nine. Year nine had 439. Year eight, 426. Now, nearly all of these, 373 of those 426 are in PE. Um, and the four students who have done the best there are Spencer, Kian, Declan, and Jess. So well done to you four in year eight. And then year seven have gone mad for GCSE pod. Absolutely crazy. 830 in year seven. Extraordinary. Nearly 600 in, uh, have watched PE um, pods, 110 English literature pods, and 71 science pods. And we've got six top scorers for pods in year seven. There's Mia. Ruben, Ben, Brooke, Megan, and Ruby. So well done to all of you. That's absolutely fantastic, amazing use of GCSE pod in year seven. So congratulations. And I would encourage it, all of you to have a look and use GCSE pod. Okay, so that's GCSE pod. Now, Duolingo. Now, I've got a stake in Duolingo because I'm doing it and I'm in the league tables, although not as high up as perhaps I should be. Although I got into Amethyst League last week and did my 100-day um, uh, um, unbroken. So I'm really pleased about that. Now, last month in April, Star was a um, winner for Duolingo. She beat all the students, all the staff. She was the top of that league table. But in May, she's got a challenger and Molly is currently top of the league. So let's see if she can stay there or if someone's going to take her crown. Any of you could join Duolingo? 
Um, so far, 93 students are registered. So that's one in five of you. Let's see how many of you are using it. Um, and Mr. Prendivals has set us all our duo lingu linguists um, a challenge this week. So the challenge is complete the five lessons on travel and travel to by next Monday. And then winners will be announced in assembly. Now, if there's a prize or if there's a competition, there will be a prize and the prize will be some chocolate that comes through the post. Um, and that's what we will send out to the winners of that competition. So get on to Duolingo. Um, if you're already there, you know what to do. If you're not, then register, complete those five lessons on travel and travel to by next Monday and see if you can win some chocolate through the post. OK, finally, then we've got Hegarty Maths. And I'm going to tell um, you all the top 10 users for each year group in Hegarty. And I know there's been some tremendous use of Hegarty, some really good maths work. So um, in year 10, um, and this is in reverse order, we've got Leon, William, Joe, Sky, Sophia, Matilda, Talia, Issa, Liana, and Liam. Well done to all of you for your fantastic Hegarty use. Congratulations. Then in year nine, we've got Ashley, Ishmael, Zoe, Joseph, Jessica, Emily, Star, Daniel, Maya, and Owen. Fantastic. Well done to you. Top 10 Hegarty users um, for your year group. Congratulations. And year eight, Ben, Lily, Dylan, Ty, Luke, Joe, Kira, Kyra, Louis, and Zach. Fantastically well done. You're doing brilliantly in your Hegarty in year eight. Those are the top 10 year eight Hegarty users. And then last but not least, we've got year sevens and year seven Hegarty users. Um, these are the top 10. So we've got Alexine, Olivia, Ava, Evie, Renee, Katie, Megan, Lilia, Lucy, Harry, and Ruby. Well done to all of you for your fantastic um, Hegarty use. I noticed in year 10 there, there are nine girls and one boy. So well done to Harry for holding up the boys' side there. But come on, boys, we need more of you doing your maths. Girls are outgunning you there, which is well done to the girls. Well, congratulations for all of you. So there's some great work going on, um, and I'm very pleased to see how much you are all doing. Now, we've also got some tremendous art and um, Miss Buckley each week has been sending us some artwork, so I'd like to, to share, you, share with you some of that work. So we've got here, um, we've got a beautiful um, butterfly there from Ruby. So I haven't put, put these up on the wall yet. These will go behind me to add to the gallery we've got behind me there. So fantastic from Ruby there. Well done. We've got some pop art from Tyler. Um, which looks very Liechtenstein, so some really good sneezing and coughing kind of um, COVID pop art, which is very good. Then Sky. Sky here, some beautiful detailed, um, I think it's is it pencil work there, some illustration there, absolutely beautiful. So that's very good indeed. Um, and then some more COVID-related um, work there from year eight from Charlie. Splat. That's very good. And Faye, this one I like very much. So Faye, Keith Herring here. She's got, used his style. We've got all those very colourful dancers. Um, a beautiful piece of work from Faye. So well done to her. So um, I think there's some more that have, haven't managed to be printed. So maybe we'll be able to share those next week. Now, last week I said that um, Jack had baked us a cake um, and that um, he had sent us a picture of his cake. Well, here it is. Stay home, stay safe, stay Oak Bank. I hope it was very tasty, Jack. Just a shame we didn't manage to get any here. So it would be nice if we had some cake because we're getting a bit hungry. So that's fantastic. Um, a really lovely cake there. And now some other shout outs. Now, I did say I was going to play Star's video, which she just sent us last week. Um, but my computer's logged off, unfortunately. It's all lined up, so I'm going to have to wait another week, Star, but it will be there, I promise. Okay, so these are the shout-outs from your teachers. So this comes from...
from Miss Smith. She's saying, well done to Lucy in year seven, whose work is always submitted on time, writing some very descriptive stories. I'm very impressed she's using a thesaurus. So well done, Lucy. Year eight, Charlie, imaginative and creative writing coming in, always on time. Year nine, Faye, for facing and overcoming challenges with English tasks and doing well and not giving up. And year 10 for Dior for always doing work on time, providing engaging, thought-provoking answers to tasks and for helping others. So and she was saying it's really hard to pick one student and, and not have huge lists. So that's from Miss Smith. Some really good news there, which is great. Um, they, these are from Mr. Coombstock and particularly um, shout outs to these year 10s who have not yet missed a single submission. So they have completed all their work, which is fantastic, a real achievement. So that's for Danielle, Joe, Issa, Casey, Tiana and Sophia. Con congratulations. That's a real achievement. You've done superbly there. Now, this is from Mr. Swan. and I have to try and read his handwriting now. So forgive me because it's a real challenge. So a huge shout out to all of Year 7 who are sending me some amazing work from letters as Ophelia to posters promoting their own film versions. Their ideas and creativity have made me very proud. Thank you and keep it going. So really great work from Year 7 Drama for Mr. Swan there. Congratulations to all of you. Now this comes from Miss Miller. Miss Miller says... Can I shout out to Joe and Reese in year eight who are consistently making a fantastic effort with their science work? So well done to Joe and Reese in year eight from Miss Miller. Miss McNamara next. Um, she would like to shout out to the Duke of Edinburgh students who have signed up to take part in the online volunteering project. Um, if you want to do that, you haven't had the opportunity to yet, look at yesterday's class chart notices and you can see you can sign up there. So obviously the more people who do that, the better. Uh, also shouting out to Phoebe and Tyler in year seven, Ben and Callum in year eight, Wilf and Alfie in year nine, and Georgia and Issa in year 10 for brilliant English work. Keep it up. And that's from Miss McNamara. Okay, now this one comes from a student from Megan. She says, can I shout out to Charlotte in year nine for being a great friend, FaceTiming me every day, putting up with me every day. She had a birthday in the Easter holidays and um, Megan was sad to miss it. And she also says that, Charlotte, you'll be very embarrassed by this. Um, but you have to blame Charlotte for that, not me. Uh, Megan for that, sorry, not me. Okay, right. So Miss Grobler's got lots of shout outs. So she says, shout outs for year seven, Matthew Hockham. And Sophie in year seven, then year eight, we've got Ruby and we've got Kyra. In year 10, we've got Liam and Danielle. Well done to all of your work for Miss Grobler. Um, moving on, Mr. Gower. Mr. Gower in year 10 would particularly like to congratulate um, Chloe for being a top performer in iMedia, only dropping one mark in last week's quiz. And for Sophie, who's also um, been brilliant with her client brief in iMedia. And then from Mr. Gower also, year nine, um, brilliant work in computer science, pi talented Python programmers. So we've got Hamida, Owen, Joe, Will, Jordan, Alex, Charlotte, Ben, Emily, Ella, Harry, Jim, Henry, Ben, and Star. Congratulations to all of you. Sounds like you're all doing some great work for Mr. Gower in year nine there. Then Miss Rockle. Gosh, there's lots today, aren't there? Miss Rockle. Um, from year eight, from Hannah and for Tyler for their work in, in drama. Hannah's excellent detail and ideas and Tyler's um, working hard to complete his drama written tasks. Um, then we've got year nine. We've got Emily and Grace who've made excellent starts to their GCSE drama. And in year 10, Leah, Sam and Tiana for getting full marks on their drama exam questions. And having been a drama teacher, I know how tough that is. So that's really very good. Well done to you three. Um, then from Miss Sawa, um, and a quick excellent well done to Kyle in year 10 for keeping up his English work. So that's from Miss Sawa. Um, oh, and that one's a repeated one. So that's all of them. Oh, just one more, actually. And this one is from Dwight. And Dwight would like to give a shout out to Mr. York.
because Mr. York has been helping him with his PE work. So there's a sh shout out from Dwight. And remember, you, you can shout out to staff as well. It'd be great to get more of those. So lots of information there. Lots of great shout outs. Highlights for me, loads of fantastic work. Those 13,000 positives that you've got. But then thinking about making sure you're all completing your work and knowing that we're going to be tracking it and making sure that everything is done. And we've got the highest expectations from you. We want you all to do extremely well and work hard so that when, when we all do get back and we can all celebrate our return to Oak Bank, you haven't lost too much and you've not been left behind and you can go forward and do extremely well and achieve your ambitions, whatever they may be, when you leave Oak Bank. For now, that's all for today. More information next week, another assembly next week. Have a great week. Get all your work done. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week.